Where is that, babe? Babe, how did you even get to know about that place? Jenna, just tell us what app you use. They were like, oh no, you're a foreigner? Okay, no, we don't accept foreigners, babe. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Jeanette and please do subscribe, like and share this video with someone who might need it. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you for tuning in again. Today we are talking about the most interesting topic, travel. You guys, I always get a lot of DMs when I'm traveling. People asking me, how did you get this place? How did you know about this place? How did you even get there? Um, how do you even get all these places? Because everything is in Chinese. I mean, I'm in China and all these apps where I get information are all in Chinese. And honestly, I do not know Chinese. I cannot speak Chinese to save my life. But when it comes to travel, I sit down, I put in the time in order to get to a place that I'm interested in. I've been living in China for less than two years now, but I know for a fact that every time I go somewhere, people are just like, where's that, babe? Babe, how did you even get to know about that place? So today's the day where I get to tell you all the tea and I get to tell you how I get to all these places and where I find these places. So the first thing we're going to talk about is inspiration. Where do I get inspiration from? So I use different apps to find travel inspiration, mainly Instagram, which everybody uses for travel inspiration. But in China, that's not the case. There's limited information about China on Instagram. I do find some city pages on Instagram that I follow, and but usually they're not consistent because like using Instagram in China, you need a VPN and not everybody has that VPN. And sometimes VP, sometimes their VPNs get blocked and so forth. So it's just a lot of admin in order to post on Instagram, right? So there are bits and pieces. I've seen places once or twice where I've been like, oh, I didn't know about this. And then I followed up on Chinese sites in order to get more information about that place because obviously Instagram does not give us enough information about places It just gives us pictures or videos or just anything to attract your attention But then in order to find more information about that place I have to go to Chinese apps where I'll get all my information So you're probably wondering which Chinese app Jeanette just tell us what app you use so I use Little Red Book. That's my favorite Chinese app. That's like the Chinese Pinterest, right? So you get so much information about everything in China on that app. I love, 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 love that app. I use Little Red Book in order to find travel inspiration across China. And it's not just inspiration. You get all the details about whatever location that you're looking up like it's it's so informative i love it so much it's so informative but it's in chinese <laughs> so i literally spend hours on end translating everything i need to know about whatever place i am going to but it really really helps and also on wechat there are travel agencies that post group trips all the time so i'm following multiple travel agencies on wechat so when they do post a trip that i'm actually interested in when i look at the pictures and i look at the itinerary i'm like mm, i would like to go there but i'd like to go there on my own remember i'm a solo traveler so sometimes yes i'm like mm, maybe it's not going to be possible to go there on my own so let me go on a group trip i have been on a group trip before and i actually enjoyed it but then um, sometimes you have to pay extra for your accommodation so that you don't share a room with a stranger, right? Um, so anyway, I look at that and then if I'm interested, I'm, I try and get information about going there on my own. Obviously, I have to do my own research using the Little Red Book and then once I have all the necessary information, I'll weigh out my options. I'm like, mm, is it possible to call to is it possible to go on my own or should I just go on a group trip, right? And most of the time I find that it's actually um, the same. It, it actually would cost me the same amount even if I went on my own or even less 
than what it costs to go on a group trip, right? Because they have to make a profit at the end of the day. So yeah, those are the three apps that I use for travel inspiration, Instagram, the Little Red Book, and WeChat, right? So now let's move over to accommodation. So by now you guys should know that I'm a trip traveler. I mean, I use trip.com a lot. And if you watch my vlogs, you know that in my description box when I plug you, there's always trip.com somewhere down there. And I mean, I've also been featured on their recent anniversary post on Instagram and Facebook. That just shows that I'm a trip traveler. So I've been using trip.com for all of my travels since I came to China. I don't even want to lie to you. Every hotel I book is through trip.com. Unless if I book through the direct website of the hotel. But most of the time I book through trip.com. So the reason I use trip.com a lot is because they have everything in English. And if there's something that goes wrong with your travel they can always call you or you can always call them and speak english with them and they'll understand they have english consultants basically so that's one of the reasons i like um trip.com also you get trip coins to save on your next trip i usually just like save mine until maybe when i'm too broke or when i'm going on an expensive vacation and i need um some discount and then i use my trip points the more you use trip.com the higher the membership and if you have a higher membership then you can save even more right so that's why i've been like loyal to trip.com because i am also benefiting from using trip.com before i came to china i used to use airbnb a lot and when i first came here i used airbnb i think once for my long-term accommodation right and the reason I don't use Airbnb anymore is that ever since the pandemic, like all these people on Airbnb do not want foreigners, right? They will tell you straight up in your face that we do not accommodate foreigners, babes. So sorry. So there's too much admin involved in Airbnb. So every time before I have to book on Airbnb, I'd have to contact the host and ask the host, do you accept foreigners who have not left China since the pandemic? You know, I really have to state, have not left China since the pandemic. But even with that being said, they don't care. They don't care. So the admin of finding accommodation on trip.com is a lot. Yes, some do accept foreigners, but it's usually the ones that are not cute, you know. So I stopped using Airbnb. And not to say that trip.com does not have any disadvantages. Don't get me wrong, they also have disadvantages because on trip.com you can't contact the host directly, right? It has happened to me, I think twice, where I booked on trip.com, they confirmed my booking, and when I got there, they were like, oh no, you're a foreigner? Okay, no, we don't accept foreigners, babe. And then I was like, but you accepted my money. And you saw that my name is not in Chinese. I mean, my name is Jeanette, it's not Xing Xiong Xiong, you know? That type of thing. But otherwise, when that happens, trip.com steps in, they call you, they try and find you accommodation closer to where you had booked, um, where they do actually accept foreigners, right? So they do help with that regard. But sometimes it's just, it's just too late, you know? It's just too late, time wasted, money wasted, everything wasted by the time they step in. But anyway, most of the hotels, luckily, do accept foreigners. As long as you bring all your details like if you get tested you bring your test report you bring your vaccination report you bring your ID which is your passport and I guess that's it like usually they don't give me troubles I also use the direct website of the hotel you're probably wondering Jeanette where do you even get the direct link to the website so because I use little red book and little red book is in Chinese, right? Sometimes people leave the links to the website on the Little Red Book and then you can go through the website and book directly there. Sometimes they don't leave the link but rather the information of the hotel. So I will take it upon myself to try and find the hotel on the app, right? And when I do find the hotel on the app, I'll maybe, because it's in Chinese, I'll find the phone number. Use the phone number to go on WeChat and add them as a contact. And that's where I can actually 
talk to them I add them on WeChat and then we start chatting because WeChat has a translation feature so I can easily just type in English and then they can translate on their side and they can easily chat in Chinese and I can translate on my side so that really helps but if a number does not work on WeChat if they don't use the same number on WeChat I just ask someone who can speak Chinese like usually my colleagues I'm just like can you would you please call these people and ask them for their WeChat contact and then I add them on WeChat. Easy as that. While we are texting on WeChat, they usually send me the link so that I can go reserve my room and pay for it. And then having them on WeChat is also an advantage because I get to ask them basically everything that I want to know about the place that I'm going to, whether it's transport or excursions or uh, whatever it, it's really helpful to have the hotel contact on WeChat because they can give you all the information about the place so yeah the transport system here is so efficient whether it's a train or a bus but a bus can be tricky sometimes because buses are usually in Chinese unless they are they are in like a big city where yeah, you find translation but most of the time you find that buses are in Chinese once you get the gist of how buses work, whether it's in Chinese or English, it's easy to use. But then for long distance travels, obviously I use the train. And everybody knows how to buy a train ticket. We buy a train ticket on Alipay, WeChat or even Trip.com. Um, I mostly use WeChat to book my train ticket. And then um, if I'm going to like a very, very small town or village, I do usually use the bus because the D, you find that the DD is so damn expensive. Maybe from the train station to the village that I'm going to, I'd have to pay like 200 or more. Um, and usually when I'm alone, I'm just like, this is just too much. And sometimes the distance that you have to pay 200 for, um, you might find that it only costs like 10 yuan by bus or even less. I usually explore my options when going to a place. I see how much it's going to cost me if I take the DD and how long it's going to take me because obviously the bus takes long. Um, if I feel like the bus, the bus is going to delay me, I'll obviously just scratch it out and take a DD and maybe just revisit that thought when I do return back to my city. Honestly, I feel like flying in China is not as efficient as using the speed train because I mean the speed train is really fast, guys. You might find that the time difference between the train and the flight might be like two or three hours and then you're just like uh might as well just take the train you know because i know for a fact that if it says it's going to arrive at 10 o'clock it will be there at 10 o'clock except for with the flight 10 o'clock might be 11 or 12 right so might as well just use the train but obviously if i'm going too far where the train would take me 10 hours and the flight is two hours i'm obviously going to use the flight right but yeah so i also book my flights on wechat or alipay the problem with alipay is that alipay is in chinese so when you use alipay you need to do a lot of translation but also i like the fact that on alipay there's a lot of discounts there seems to be more discount on alipay than on wechat try that and thank me later so yeah um i use that a lot um i use wechat a lot basically mainly for transport so let's move over to excursions usually what i do when it comes to excursions is that i go on little red book again when someone posts about a hotel or a certain um, scenic area or a certain location they have a lot to say like those bloggers really have a lot to say they will tell you how much it costs they will tell you where to go where they went like from day one till the end of their vacation right so that's what they do so from that if i see something nice i take that and i go on maybe trip.com to find more information about the that place in english or if i cannot find anything of that sort in English on trip.com what I do is I just go back on Redbook and I, I try and find more information about that excursion on little red book so I try to look up the excursion and I read more about it until I find the exact location until I find 
the exact amount it costs until I know exactly where to buy the tickets to go and do whatever I need to do. Do I buy at the door? Do I need to buy in advance? Do I need to buy two weeks in advance? Those people do actually give such information that will tell you you need to buy book a month in advance because the tickets are always sold out or maybe uh, you don't need to worry. You can buy at the door. You can buy on WeChat. You can buy on Alipay. You can do like they give you all sorts of information on Little Red Book. So I use Little Red Book for all my excursions. But some years I do use trip.com, but like usually when I go on trip.com for excursions, it's usually a follow up from the little red book, what I saw on the little red book. And one thing about one thing I like about the little red book is that it's usually trendy stuff like whatever's trending at the moment you will find on little red book. And also I use DN Ping. DN Ping um, also has trendy spots especially when it comes to restaurants i love using dnp to find nice restaurants in that area trending restaurants in that area high review restaurants in that area dnp is the way to go when it comes to restaurants but also with excursions they do have excursions on dnp so sometimes i do find nice excursions on dnp i recently found like with my previous trip in Shenzhen, i found a studio I found a studio on Dian Ping, um, just a photo studio that I went to to just take pictures. Um, you can find like literally, and also one thing I like about Dian Ping is that you find discount coupons on Dian Ping. That's the one thing I like about it. You find that it maybe costs 100 yuan to go to a certain place or to pay for like the entrance fee of whatever you want to do. And then you usually find a coupon or discount on DNP. Like always, there's always discounts or coupons on DNP. So that's why I like DNP. Obviously, you can't come to China and only have Google Maps on your phone and believe that Google Maps will take you from point A to point B in China. Babes, Google Maps will fade you in China. So I have three maps on my phone. So. The difference between these three maps is that when I use, I, I mostly use Apple Maps. I don't want to lie to you. I mostly use Apple Maps because it's in English, right? But then Apple Maps routes are not up to date, right? Because I guess it's not Chinese. So you need to use Chinese maps in order to find the updated um, routes or updated traffic and information about the timetable of the train or the bus right with the chinese apps or the chinese maps that's where you'll find the updated information and um i found i've also found that when using apple maps um to walk right it will only get you to a certain point but it will not get you to the exact location it's like google maps maps back at home it will tell you you have reached your destination and then when you look around you're like okay i have to go to number 301 and when you're looking for 301 you can't even see it but it says you have reached your destination right the same applies with apple maps it will tell you that you have reached your location and then when you look around you still can't find your location but when you use the chinese apps I don't know how they say you've reached your destination in Chinese, but all I can tell you is that when I get closer to the place, if maybe the place is within 100 meters and I still cannot find it because there's just too many things happening around me and I use a Chinese app to find the location, it usually takes to the exact location. I've never been disappointed when it comes to the Chinese maps, especially within close proximity. But when you use the Apple Maps, looking for a place within 100 or 200 meters from you babes it will fail you let me know if it also happened to you before that the apple maps or google maps does not get you to the exact location i can't be the only one but yeah so i use 10 cent maps because some apps when you i'll take a pin from wherever i found information about that place and then i use the maps in order to find the place right so some pins depending on the blogger some pins cannot be followed up with certain apps so some pins don't do not work with baidu maps and some pins do not work with tencent maps it just depends on what app 
supports that person's pin. So sometimes it supports Tencent and sometimes it supports Baidu. So that's the reason why I have both Tencent and Baidu maps. But they basically just do the same thing. And I mean, I don't understand both of them because they're just in Chinese. The nice thing about maps is they're all the same, right? The train will have a train icon. The bus will have the bus icon. The walking will have a pedestrian icon. Everything is just there. So it's not rocket science to use maps. It is really, really helpful to use both Chinese apps. And sometimes, um, sometimes when you try to find information about islands, the island that I went to the other time, I couldn't find information about that island using Apple Maps, but I could only find a route to that. When, every, when I used the Apple Map from my place to the island, it told me that there are no routes to get to that place. But when I used the Chinese maps, that's when they told me that, okay, you can do this. You can take a bus to this place and you can take a train to this place and then you can take um, a ship to that place. That's how I knew how to get there, using Chinese maps. That's why I'm saying with Chinese apps, you get all the information because you're in China. But with English maps, you are in China. You can't expect to find all the information in English, right? I also use the app Metroman. So Metroman is a train app that you can use in order to find train routes, right? So the metro lines of that city you're going to, you can always estimate the time um, it's going to take you from a certain um, station to the next station. And you can always do that from home. And they are usually the most accurate ones, more accurate than the maps. Because usually on Little Red Book, they will state that, oh, this place is close to whatever, whatever station. So I use metro maps to be like, let me calculate the time it's going to take from my hotel which is close to this subway station to the excursion which is close to this subway station at this time on this day you can actually do that so it's just very informative for me and on that app you can actually find the the whole metro map of that city so you can actually try and see okay am i going to be in the east or the west side of this place or am i going to book on the in the north or the south and then are the excursions on the west or the east you know stuff like that so it helps you it helps me a lot with planning my vacations so yeah guys those are all the apps that i use when traveling I hope that you've learned a thing or two from this video and don't forget to like, subscribe and share with someone who might need this information. Happy travels!